Hi peeps! Welcome back to my Estrang Techie YouTube channel. Another week, another learnings in science. Week 2 is about chemical bonding. A very interesting topic. Right class? At the end of this video lesson, you are going to recognize and differentiate the different types of compounds such as ionic and covalent and their properties. So, without further ado, let's get started with our new lesson. Before we start, let us have a short activity. Metal or non-metal. Do you still remember how to identify if the element is metal or non-metal? If not, all you need to do is look at your periodic table of elements. Shown in your screen right now is the periodic table of elements which are grouped as to metals, metalloids, and non-metals. Metals are those colored with red. Metalloids are yellow. And non-metals are blue. Let us have an example. Lithium is a metal element. Neon is a non-metal element. While boron is a metalloid element. If we will recall, metalloids are a unique group of elements that share properties of both metal and non-metals. Remember that class? So, as easy as that! Let us start with our activity. All you need to do is identify if the element is metal or non-metal. First one, iron. By looking in your periodic table of elements, iron is a metal element. That's correct. Next, silver. Silver is a metal element. That is right. The last one, hydrogen. Hydrogen is an example of a non-metal element. Good work, class. Now, let us proceed with our lesson for today. Do you know this man? He is the famous chef called Salt Bay. He is popular because of his way of pouring salt. Now, do you know that table salt is an example of compounds? Compounds are chemical substances made up of two or more elements that are chemically bound together. One good example is sodium chloride or the table salt. Do you like bonding with your friends, family, or loved ones? Do you miss bonding with your classmates? Bonding as humans are very important in our social and emotional state. Moreover, do you know that atoms bond as well? And that is what we call chemical bonding. Chemical bonding is a lasting attraction between atoms, ions, or molecules that enables the formation of chemical compounds. And there are several types of chemical bonding. One type is ionic bonding. It is formed through complete transfer of electron from one atom to another atom. It exists between metals and non-metals. Now, the question is, why do atoms bond? Atoms bond to become stable. When a metal element bond with a non-metal element, that is ionic bonding wherein ions are formed. Ion is an atom or molecule with positive or negative charge. It is formed after a metal atom transfer its valence electron to non-metal atom. 
take note class, valence electron is the electron found in the outermost shell of an atom. You can determine the number of valence electron by looking at its group number in the periodic table of elements. For example, oxygen is in group 6. That is why its valence electrons is 6. Next, ions are classified as cation and anion. Cation, when a metal atom loses electron. An ion, when a non-metal atom gains electron. Are we clear, class? Now, let us proceed. Just like what I said earlier, it happens between a metal and non-metal element. If there is a complete transfer and gaining of electrons, ionic bonding happens. One example is sodium chloride, wherein sodium is metal and chlorine is non-metal. Next type of chemical bonding that we are going to have is covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is also called molecular bond. It is a chemical bond that involves sharing of electron pairs between atoms. It commonly occurs when two Non-metals bond together. Non-metals have strong energy attractions or high electronegativity compared to metals, just like hydrogen. They do not need to give electrons to be stable. Instead, they gain or share electrons to obtain stability. For example, fluorine is a non-metal element. Covalent bond completes the octet for both. Sharing of electrons will obtain stability. Another one is oxygen, a non-metal element that has six valence electrons. It can make two covalent bonds with hydrogen which has one valence electron, resulting to H2O or water. That is covalent bonding. There are two types of covalent bonding. Non-polar covalent bond and polar covalent bond. Non-polar covalent bond is when electrons are shared equally. For example, hydrogen has no electronegativity difference. Next, Polar covalent bond is when electrons are shared unequally. For example, hydrogen and fluorine. Fluorine has more electronegative than hydrogen. Therefore, electronic cloud tilts toward fluorine atoms than hydrogen. Now, let us proceed to the properties of ionic and covalent compound. Let us have the existence. Ionic exists in the solid state only, while covalent exists as solid, liquid, and gas. In terms of conductivity, or the measure of the ease at which an electric charge or heat can pass through a material, ionic has low conductivity, while covalent has very low conductivity. In terms of hardness, or the resistance of the material, ionic is very hard or brittle, while covalent is not very hard and more flexible. Ionic has higher melting and boiling points than covalent. When it comes to malleability and ductility, both ionic and covalent are not malleable and not ductile. Covalent has high volatility than ionic. When it comes to solubility, ionic is soluble in water but insoluble in organic solvent, while covalent is insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents. So, these are the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. 
that is all for our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new about chemical bonding, about ionic and covalent bonding. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye!